we were talking about the important conversation of uh, uh, Kenyan troops still being in Somalia. Is that likely to end any time soon? We've had other countries saying that it's time maybe that the army some troops leaves, uh, leave, but is it really time for that? The the mandate of AMISOM is up to 2018, mm -hmm. and, um, and, but that could be uh, also renewed. Right. Um, as I was saying, the, the bigger question that uh, critics are talking about in okay. terms of President Uhuru's visit to Somalia is they should be talking about why are AMISOM troops in Somalia in the first place? Right. And for them to exit, what would it require mm -hmm. uh, to happen? And, um, uh, Amazon um, has to have eventually an honorable and orderly exit. And for that to happen, you need to stand up Somali security forces that are capable of taking over uh, from the departing Amazon troops. And uh, until that happens, um, we hope uh, that uh, the troops will, will stay there. Do you um, think that, that that is one of the priorities for Farmoja right now? Um, Formaggio definitely uh, wants to improve uh, on security. Um, it's a big challenge, mm -hmm. um, and that cannot be done uh, in a very, very short time. Right. Um, this problem has taken a, a long time to, uh, to be in place, mm -hmm. and, but the expectations is that this, he will do all of these things within a very short time. All right, let's talk about also the drought crisis uh, in Somalia. It is one of the things that Antonio Guterres spoke about just a few days when he was here in the country, and he asked, uh, you know, other countries to come in and support Somalia in this time. Kenya is also, you know, having issues to do with the famine. Uh, what kind of conversations are we likely to see between uh, the two presidents, seeing that Kenya already has an issue to do with famine, but also Somalia is affected by the same? Absolutely. Um, the the droughts are regional. Um, Somalia, Kenya, all the way to Yemen. This is uh, happening. It's uh, it's very tragic. Um, a lot of people. Um, first of all, the animals uh, yeah. were dead, and now people are dying in Somalia. Um, the two presidents could perhaps do a joint appeal right. uh, to put a little bit more pressure on you know agencies mm. and donors to to act. Uh, expeditiously mm -hmm. and um, those could be um, part of their discussion another could be as you know we have a large uh, refugee population here in Kenya right and as they discuss uh, their re repatriation they could also be talking about how the droughts could hamper uh, that process of, of repatriation let's talk about that repatriation it has been uh, one of the issues where you know countries, you know, international uh, partners have come in and said, and even criticized Kenya for actually making that uh, decision to, you know, have refugees living in Kenya going back uh, to Somalia. Is it really time that that happened? Uh, is Somalia ready to handle this, you know, these people who are coming in? Is it stable enough to have people uh, coming in? What many people don't actually look at very closely mm -hmm. is the simple logic mm -hmm. that when there is insecurity, when there is drought, when there is you know, humanitarian catastrophe, mm -hmm. people do not stay in place. They move and they go to places where it is safer, yeah. where it is uh, easier for them to make livelihoods. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, borders, or fortunately, borders right. do not control that. Right. What governments are trying to do is to manage that refugee and humanitarian crisis. So, now, in Somalia, as the security situation gets better, as the uh, livelihoods get better, people are and going back. And it is back. getting better? And it is getting better, okay. and people are going back. Uh, in fact, what I know is that the Somali embassy right here uh, processes uh, up to 400 um, uh, returnees that are not registered okay. mm -hmm. with UNHCR. Mm -hmm. This is how These are people who want to go back. People are who are going back voluntarily. There are so many uh, uh, displaced persons mm -hmm. and refugees that are not even registered that are here in yeah. Kenya. Yeah. Um, I, I heard the figures up to 50,000 people. So these are people who are urban dwellers and they're going to go back to cities. Uh, these are people who are able to go to the embassy, get their uh, uh, passports mm -hmm. and, and go back. Uh, the others, uh, those who are in refugee camps, yes, yes. that we have uh, much more closer uh, coordination mm -hmm. with Kenya and UNHCR.
It's interesting that you say that because, you know, for a long time, the, the story about Somalia has been an unfortunate, un unfortunate one. Most of the times, you know, you, you know you're talking about the Al-Shabaab. There's so many negative things that, you know, people have to say about Somalia. Mm -hmm. But here you are telling us that actually life back there is sort it's of like improving. improving. It is improving. Mm -hmm. It is improving. And what we hope is that uh, President Formaggio and his new government mm -hmm will uh, build on, on those bases and improve even further. Mm. Uh, he has a lot in his hand. Uh, we talked about uh, the droughts. Uh, right. We talked about security. Yes. Um, he has to reform the security sector. Uh, we, he has to strengthen uh, government institutions. Mm -hmm. He has mm -hmm. to fight corruption. Um, he has to do all of these things, but he cannot do all of that in a vacuum. Yes, he yes. has to also um, uh, review and finalize the constitution. He has to work mm -hmm. on reconciliation. And so the, the priority is this a lot of work and his government, I'm sure, will be able to uh, deal in prioritizing uh, those issues. Le and, and talking about prioritizing those issues, and uh, you know you've talked about security being a very uh, big issue right now in Somalia. Just a few days there was uh, that uh, suicide attack uh, in, in the capital. I mean, what kind of support does he still need to ensure that he can stabilize uh, the country, and especially when it comes to security, also considering the Al-Shabaab factor? Yes, I mean, there is a still uh, strong um, um, violent extremism going on inside Somalia. Yeah. And for President Formaggio mm -hmm. to counter that violent extremism, uh, he needs to look at it comprehensively. Mm -hmm. It cannot be only a militaristic security angle solution. Right. It right. requires political, uh, social, mm -hmm. economic. Mm -hmm. Uh, inclusivity and uh, and the dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, what he can get help with is um, how to address those issues holistically. Um, he has to start with his own security mm -hmm. uh, forces, uh, the National Security Agency, mm -hmm. uh, other security sectors. Um, justice has to be delivered. Right. And sometimes people are disenfranchised because they don't get justice. And that is what could be uh, could make them sympathizers mm. of Al Shabaab and the Shabab. lights. Right. You are a presidential aspirant. Uh, when you know back in February, what can you? What do you think about Farmer Joe's, um, you know, leadership? I know it's it's a bit too early to talk <laughs> about it, uh, but I'm sure you've interacted with you know his ideals and you know about him. Uh, what can you say? Um, what kind of a president you know is Somali likely to have with him in power? Um, he is uh, from. What I know uh, about him, he is um, someone who dives into a situation wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. um, he is uh, honest about that. Mm -hmm. um, he has a bit of an emotion, which can be good and bad. But emotions, uh, yes, or really? emotions. Okay. Um, and um, sometimes it is good, mm -hmm. um, and, and this is the reason why so many Somalis came out. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and, and gave him. Uh, a historical national mandate. Right. So many people came out. Mm -hmm. um, but it also has its downside because the expectations are so high yeah. and that it is unrealistic for him to meet those expectations in such a short time. Mm -hmm. um, I think he has a good partner in the prime minister and they will be able together with their cabinet uh, to um, prioritize those issues and, and, and deal with them. However, uh, the cabinet has been appointed only two days ago so the jury is still out. Right. Uh, in our system of government, what we have is uh, the parliament has to give a vote of confidence mm -hmm. to the government. Mm. Uh, I understand there are some uh, still negotiations, right, and, right. and you know, um, but hopefully they will pass. I mean, being a presidential candidate at some point, I'm sure you know you have so much hope and so much, uh, you know, expectations of uh, Somalia as a country. Do you think that you know there's that future that you know? you had, the vision you had for Somalia, which is going to be soon in the offing. You know, we'll be thinking about Somalia and thinking about a place that we want to go visit the beaches and go, you know, see other things that, you know, that Somali is able to uh, give to the world. I'm very hopeful. Mm -hmm. I'm very optimistic and uh, for Somalia and for the Somali people. I think that future is mm -hmm. almost here. Mm -hmm. Um, as soon as we stabilize and security gets better, mm -hmm. government institutions get better, we uh, 
you know, deal with uh, issues of corruption. Right. Um, uh, we ha also have uh, states that have been performing on their own mm -hmm. without a central government for a very long time. Okay. And those states have been now formalized and formed. Uh, our power is negotiated one. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, and, and delegated to, to the federal government. So this government has to deal with that. But in terms of my own personal hope, I see um, a very bright future mm. in Somalia. Mm. Just right after the elections, uh, property prices are again uh, going up. People okay. are speculating. Um, there is uh, so much economic activity uh, on the ground. Right. Um, so, you know, many diaspora uh, are coming back to the country, uh, investing. Mm. Um, right now, for the droughts, it is Somali people everywhere mm -hmm. that are making contributions. Oh, wow, across and the world. Across the world. Okay. I mean, the world is helping, but the contributions of the Somalis, helping their own Somali mm -hmm. brothers and mm -hmm. sisters, mm -hmm. is more than all and the it, other international. Wow. Uh, so, so these are the things that are, I mean, we were a country that was so uh, fragmented, uh, fought along clans, as, you know, civil war has mm -hmm. taken place, mm -hmm. but today to see Somalis coming to the aid of other Somalis, it is really uh, very inspiring. All right. Yeah. You, you, you look like you're very hopeful. Let's, let's